All right, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first things first, um, I haven't gotten all your stuff back yet, thanks to spring break and all, uh, for your test. So it looks like I'll be passing it back on Wednesday. But you'll know as soon as I get it when you get an actual bleep in your Canvas site and the grades pop in there. So I haven't gotten the stuff back yet to get it all merged together. I've got most of it, but I haven't got the free response back for most of you guys. So it'll be on Wednesday by the time I get you guys the papers back. So look in this next couple of days for uh, your test number two stuff as we're working on chapter seven material for test number three. So since we've had spring break, we have to kind of a little, little bit of review. We're in this last little section from section 7.2, 7.3, what I call non-rotational solids. And it's the idea of you've got some kind of a base, and out of that base, you're projecting a particular geometric shape, and which will make a 3D shape. And so the formula for doing this, of these non-rotational solids, is the volume is equal to the sum of the cross-sectional area with either delta X or delta Y, depending on how you slice it, whether you cut into the Y axis or cut into the X axis. So we did this problem last time, which was this parabola, that was, uh, u, which is a standard y equals x squared parabola, and y equals 16 is the top. And we made little slices out of this guy where we were parallel to the x-axis, which means we uh, cut into the y-axis. And we figured out the volume of this guy. So today I brought a little manipulative just to kind of give you guys a, a feel for this. So if you look at this splayed on, this guy straight on is a parabola. Here's y equals x squared, here's y equals 16. But if you look at it from a 3D, the cross sections are squares. This is what you're finding and you're doing it. Basically a little bitty, a little bitty square. So it's like poker chips being stacked up, but, it's, uh, but, they're, but they're very, very thin. So you get this nice smooth shape out of this guy. And you found the volume of this particular object to be uh, 512 units cubed. Now the problem over here was the exact same problem, and that is we had a classic y equals x squared parabola, and we have y equals 16, but this time we made the slices go vertical, which meant if you extended it on, you cut into the x-axis. So this became a dx problem. And so to get the idea of what the volume is going to look like, so if you look at this right from the top, you can see the shape of the parabola, but this time we're actually making the slices on this guy vertical, so you end up getting, you know, you got your classic parabola going down this way, or it could do it this way, and you basically, you get these little squares, and this is actually what the shape is actually going to look like when you're said and done, and so you end up getting, you know, it, it, it's smaller because of the way we had to cut it, but uh, you end up getting a volume of 1,092.26667 uh, uh, units cubed on that one. So let's pick it up with the next problem here. So doing this problem, first thing you want to do is this. Read the problem, draw whatever region they give you. It says this. A three-dimensional solid has a shape of a circular base with radius 4. So I'm going to go with a circular base. I'm going to put my coordinate axis right down the middle here. Radius 4. So here's 4, 4, negative 4, negative 4. Circular base. Okay? Now, parallel cross sections, since it's a circular base, can be made with respect to the x-axis or y-axis. But most important is their equilateral triangles. So it doesn't matter if you slice it vertically or horizontally, you're going to get the exact same picture because your base is a circle. That's what they're telling you. So which, which axis would you like to cut into? Would you like to do the dy axis or do, I mean, do the uh, y axis, which makes it a dy problem, or do you want to cut into the x axis and make it a dx problem? It's your choice. dx. So we're going to make the cuts this way. So you're going to have lots of little cuts on this thing. Now, remember, the formula is the volume is equal to the sum of the cross-section area 
And because we're cutting into the x-axis, you chose to do dx. But it, honestly, you can, because it's a circle, you can turn it this way and make it a dy problem if you wanted to. But, uh, that, but we chose dx, your choice. Okay? But now, here's the deal. Cross sections made with respect to the y or x-axis are equilateral triangles. So what's coming out of this guy, you got to kind of imagine this being 3D, so I'm sticking out of the page, is this equilateral triangle. What do you guys know, here comes your trig now, about an equilateral triangle? Sides are all the same. So this side, this side, and this side are all the same. Which also means that the angles are what? All the same. And so the angles are all the same, and since we're talking about a triangle, what angles would these... Degree, what degrees, we'll go degrees on this one. What degrees would these angles be? 60 degrees. 60 degree, 60 degree, 60 degree equilateral triangle. You with me? Now, the area, remember cross-section area, area of a triangle is one-half base times height. The base is right here. The base is the side. We'll get into the variables in just a second. So I'm going to call this side. So this is a side and this is a side. Does that make sense? But to be able to get the area of a triangle, it's one half base times height. Well, the side is the base, but I gotta figure out this height. Does that make sense? So my base is equal to S, but what about the height? Well, when I cut this thing in half, I see a different kind of triangle. It's a very special triangle that we all had SAT questions about. And what kind of a triangle is that guy when we split it down the middle? This, this, this is going to be a half S over here. The hypotenuse is an S. And this one is going to be, if you take a 60-degree angle, cut it in half, it's going to be 30. This one is still 60 degrees. This is the famous 30-60-90 triangle. Does that make sense? What do you guys remember about the famous 30-60-90 triangle? Well, the side opposite the... Uh, um, the the 30 degree angle is half the hypotenuse, so you notice it's half S, and it makes sense because we split in half there. That's S. Do you guys happen to remember what the uh, adjacent side to the 30 degree angle, the opposite side of the 60 degree angle, has to be? Square root of 3 over 2 times S. And if you didn't know that, you should be able to direct, uh, derive it from the fact from the Pythagorean theorem. So if you want to call this question mark here, question mark squared plus one-half S squared has got to be equal to S squared. So question mark squared plus S squared over 4 is equal to S squared. Subtract X squared over 4 from both sides. So I get question mark squared equals 1S squared minus one-fourth S squared is three-fourths S squared. Then you take the square root and you get the question mark to be the square root of 3, square root of 4 is 2. The square root of S squared is S. That's where it comes from. So you could derive it if you needed to. But you should be able to have the ability to come up with this particular side. And this is the height. So my height is equal to the square root of 3 over 2S. Things we know from high school stuff. So area is equal to 1 half the base, which is S times the height, which is the square root of 3 over 2 times s. I'm going to clean that up. So area is equal to the square root of 3. 2 times 2 is over 4, and s times s is s squared. Now, here's the deal. So volume is equal to the sum of the cross-sectional area, but that cross-sectional area is equal to the square root of 3 over 4 s squared. And you guys decided to go delta x on this thing. So I'm plugging it into my formula. But here's the deal. I need to have this thing typically in terms of x, but at least x or y. i got to convert it to x or y's. Now here's the deal. You, you guys decided to make the cut this way and cut into the x-axis. You told me to do that. So I've got to convert this distance right here. What is this distance right here? 
Well, when I move away from the x-axis, we're talking about plotting points, so we need just a variable. When I move away from the x-axis, what direction am I going? Plot points. You go over x, but you go what? Up or down y. So this distance right here, away from the x-axis, is a y distance. And so, because of symmetry, this distance is also going to be a y distance. So how much is a side equal to? Y up this way and Y down this way. What do you get? When you have them together, you get 2Y. Does that make sense? Because this is being split right down the middle. It's symmetry. Y at the top and Y at the bottom when you arbitrate plot points. You go over, horizontal X, vertical, up or down Y. So you go up Y and you got to go down Y because they have X axis splits it down the middle. So that makes it Y here, Y there. It makes it 2Y. So... Volume is equal to the sum of the square root of 3 over 4 times S squared, but S is 2Y squared times delta X. Volume is equal to the sum of the square root of 3 over 4. 2 squared is 4. Y squared is a Y squared times your delta X. Here the 4s cancel, so you're left with volume is equal to the sum of the square root of 3 Y squared delta X. Now, at any time, you can convert this into an integral problem because summation turns into integration and your delta x turns into dx. So this turns into volume is equal to the integral of the square root of 3 y squared dx. And I got a problem. What's my problem? What, what variable am I trying to integrate this thing with respect to? x. x. But what do I have in the middle of this guy? Y squared. So I need to come up with the equation that links these two guys together. And here's the important part. This is why you need to know the equation for the base. This is a circle. Circle centered at the origin, 0, 0. Do you guys remember the equation of a circle centered at the origin? Things you were supposed to know from high school. What you got? Okay, you can go for the general one. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. That is the general formula for the equation of a circle, right? But since it's centered at the origin, what's H and K? Zero, zero. Being H and K is going to be zero, zero, you get X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. What was the radius of this here circle? They told us that at the beginning. What was the radius? 4. So you get x squared plus y squared equals 4 squared. So x squared plus y squared equals 16. And I want to convert this guy in terms of x so I can integrate him because I'm integrating with respect to x. So y squared would be equal to 16 minus x squared. There's my linking equation. And I can go and plug him right in here for my y squared. So this now turns into the integral of the square root of 3 times y squared is 16 minus x squared dx. And now all I need is my bounds. What's my bounds going to be? Again, go back and look at your picture. Where are the x numbers uh, defined between in terms of your region? This is x, so we're talking about x numbers. It's between negative 4 and positive 4. So your bounds of your circle is between negative 4 and positive 4. Does that make sense? So this makes you outthink the problem in terms of it's a standard formula, the same one we always use, which is the volume equals the sum of the cross section, that's the part that sticks out of the page, times either delta x or delta y, depending on how you slice. Since we're talking about squares, we're talking about uh, you know equilateral triangles here, but it, it is a, 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 a triangle. So area of a triangle is one-half base times height. And so I just talk about a general side on this guy to come up with a formula. And then I had to convert it to x and y. And then I had to convert it to the variable that I needed to have. Now all i got to do is integrate it. Well, square root of 3 is a constant. Leave it alone. Integral of 16 with respect to x is 16x. Minus integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. Evaluated from negative 4 to 4. So you get the square root of 3 times 16 times 4 minus 4 cubed over 3 minus the square root of 3 times 16 times negative 4 
minus negative 4 cubed over 3. And now all I got to do is crunch it out on my calculator. I'm going to leave the square root of 3 because that's going to be the irrational part in terms of this problem and the, the, the answer here. So it's going to be 16 times 4 minus 4 cubed divided by 3. Oops, over error there. Over error divided by 3. So there's that part right there. So I end up getting square root of 3 times, and I'll just convert that to a nice fraction here, 128 thirds minus the square root of 3. Now I'm going to plug in negative 4 into this thing. And I'll insert a parenthesis here and a negative. And then insert a parenthesis here and a negative. And what a surprise, I pretty much get the same thing but negative. But it is minus, minus 128 over 3. And a minus a negative makes it positive. So this is 128 over 3 squared to 3 plus another 128 over 3 squared to 3. And so 128 divided by 3 plus 128 divided by 3 is... 256 thirds times the square root of 3 units what? Cubed, because you found the volume of this guy. Now, the question always is, when you're doing these rotation or non-rotation solids, what does this thing actually look like? So to get a feel for this guy, I'll draw him down here, because doing that freehand artwork here. Here's my circle, and I made these little uh, cross sections, and I made them vertical slices by your request, so you can get the delta x in here. But then we made them little equilateral triangles. So you've got to envision these equilateral triangles sticking out of the page. And right in the middle, you get your biggest peak here, and then you come back down, and you get this nice little ridge line coming out of here. So... We made another one of these things off of our 3D printer. Awesome, cool things here. And so the way you guys have it oriented, it looks like that. So it's a circle and your cross section. So if I turn on the side, I'll turn on the side here, you can see the uh, cross sections is that actual uh, equilateral triangle. But you guys decided you wanted to cut it this way, which puts your kind of quote unquote the ridge line around the top. But again, if you tilt it to the side, you can see your triangles actually being put in there. So that's what you made the volume on. Does that make sense? Non-rotational solid. It's tedious. It's not hard, but it is incredibly tedious because you've got to actually come across and actually get these formulas uh, set up for you guys. Remember, where did I start this kind of problem at? It is the sum of the volume is equal to the sum of the cross-section area so I first start with the, the base, and then I draw my little cross section here, analyze that so I can get the area of this guy. But i got to base this area based upon X's and Y's, and then depending on which axis I slice, whether it's going to be a delta X or delta Y. So let's do another one. Well, don't worry, we got another one to do. But let's look at some of these examples in terms from web work. All right. I'm working on fixing up the calculator project for you guys. This is going to be due on March 21st, I think is what I put that on. But uh, I want to, so I'm going to talk to you guys more about it next time. So I've taken it off because I want to, I want to make sure you guys understand the questions and stuff. And with these words of horizontal uh, slices and vertical slices, you guys are going to be confused. So I'm going to go back and reword these problems so you guys would actually understand them. So look on your Canvas site tonight for your calculator project about how to do volume rotation stuff. Now here's the deal. This is the kind of problems we're going to give you guys on test. We're going to give you one region, we're going to make you beat it up. Now remember, there are two formulas for volume rotation. And I'm going to go with the general, general formulas. Volume is equal to pi times integral of big functional radius squared minus little functional radius squared dx from a to b. This is called the disk washer formula. Now, this guy is dx, which tells me, when do I use the disk washer formula, the dx version of it? Well, 
when you're going to be a uh, function of region in terms of x and rotating about x-axis or parallel. That is when you use the disk washer formula. The function is in terms of x, that's that dx thing, and you're rotating around the x-axis. The variable of the region that you're rotating and the axis that you're rotating around is the exact same. x-axis, the function in terms of x, or parallel to the x-axis. You're going to use the disk washer method. The other form is this. Volume is equal to 2 pi times integral from A to B of what I call the point radius times, I'm doing f of x top minus g of x bottom part of your region dx. This is called the shell method. The shell method, here's the deal. Functions in terms of x. But you're going to rotate, but rotate about the y-axis or parallel. So when do I use the uh, shell method? When the variable of my region is opposite from the axis that I'm rotating around. If my function is in terms of x, I'm rotating around the y-axis or parallel to the y-axis, that's the shell method problem. When the function is in terms of x, and I want to rotate around the x-axis or parallel to the x-axis, that's the disk washer problem. You've got to know the difference so you know which formula to use. Now, of course, I'm using the dx functions in terms of x. If I switch that up, which they like to do to you guys on the old final exam, the function will be in terms of y. If the function is in terms of y and I'm rotating around the y-axis or parallel to the y-axis, they're the same variable. That's the disk washer formula. When the function is in terms of y and I want to rotate around the x-axis or parallel, that'll be a shell method problem. It's the same deal. When the variable of the function and the axis is the same, it's disk washer. When the variable of the function and the axis is opposite, that's the shell method problem. Nine times out of ten, they're going to give you a function in terms of x. But just on occasion, they'll give you a function in terms of y, so you got to know how to convert these guys over. So you look at this problem here. Consider region bounded by the curves. I've got y equals x and y equals negative x squared plus 2x. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is graph this guy, so I'm going to go over here and get my calculator cleared out. So I want to get a good picture of this guy. y equals x and y equals negative x squared plus 2x. And I'm going to do a zoom 6 on it, zoom standard, negative 10 by 10 screen here. And I'm looking for the region that's been captured. And if I zoom in on that spot, you're going to see that it's a very small little slither. It's right there. That's what's been captured. So I'm going to draw that region. It's an upside down parabola, and it's a line. So I kind of blew it up for you guys a little bit. This is y equals negative x squared plus 2x, it's a parabola, and y equals x. And my points of intersection are at 0, and at this point right here, and where do they meet up at? I believe it is 1. Let's double check. Uh, when y, x is 1, y is 1. When x is 1, 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 plus 2 times 1, 2. Negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Yep, meets up here at 1. And y happens to be 1 right here, buddy. There you go. So here are my points of intersection. But here's what I'm trying to focus on. My function is in terms of x. What's the first question? First question is from chapter 7.1. Find the area. Area is equal to the integral of top minus bottom dx, or right minus left dy from a to b. This will be the integral. What's on top is the parabola, negative x squared plus 2x, minus what's on bottom is the line, x dx. This is dx, so x numbers from 0 to 1. I'm going to clean this. I'm going to just save some time on this one because they're easy problems to integrate here, so I'm just going to do it on the calculator here. So I'm going to do math number 9, integral from 0 to 1 of parentheses, negative x squared plus 2x, close parentheses, minus parentheses x, dx. Again, trying to show you techniques of the calculator. I don't try to clean up very much if I'm going to be using the calculator to integrate. 
because any kind of cleaning up I do could cause careless error. You know, negative, negative makes it another negative or something stupid like that. And then all of a sudden I messed up the problem. So just, I'm going to make it look exactly like the problem looks. Top minus bottom. And I end up getting uh, 0.16667. And if I know my fraction, that's 1 6. There it is. 1 6. But well, what should I put in terms of my units? Units, which one? Squared, because it's area. Unit squared, we found this area in here. But now, look at what we do in part B. Find the volume of the region rotated, uh, uh, find the volume of the region rotated around the x-axis. So it's the same problem from zero to one, but this time we're gonna rotate around the x-axis. So please understand, my function is in terms of x, y equals negative x squared plus 2x, and y equals x. My functions are that define the region is in terms of x, and I'm rotating around the x-axis. What method am I going to use every time? Disk washer. Disk washer. Form is volume is equal to pi times integral of big functional rate squared minus little functional rate squared dx from a to b. My big functional radius is from the axial rotation, which the x-axis is y equals 0, to the outside edge. So because we're rotating around the x-axis, the big functional radius becomes the actual equation. Negative x squared plus 2x, officially minus 0 if you want to do that. Your small radius is from the axial rotation to the inside edge, x minus 0. So this gives you negative x squared plus 2x. This just gives you x. So volume is equal to pi times integral from 0 to 1. That's the bounds of your region of the uh, top function, basically, but it'd be squared. Negative x squared plus 2x squared minus the bottom one, x squared dx. Now, on a lot of these problems, including your calculator project, we want you to set up the integral and we'll allow you to use your calculator to integrate. However, on the final exam, they may make you integrate this thing by hand. If you had to integrate this thing by hand, clean it up first. Boil this part out, minus x squared, combine like terms, and integrate each term. You'll get still get the right answer, but, you know, it uh, just takes a lot more time to do it. So look at this problem here. To get the answer, it's the same problem as before, except it's the top function squared minus bottom function squared. So I'm going to call that function, the integral back down, and go and insert square here, and insert a square there. And now, and the only thing that's missing is what? The pi out front, and I'll stick that on my answer. So now the answer is 0.2, and for you math fraction fans, that's one-fifth. So the answer is one-fifth pi, but what would I put for my units? Units cubed, because you found volume. Because now you took this region, and you rotated them around the uh, x-axis, and you look something like this. Does that make sense? Now, find the volume of the same region. Notice what we're doing. We're taking one region and beating it up. So, the same region. Here is y equals negative x squared plus 2x. Here is the line y equals x from 0 to 1. But this time, we're going to rotate around the line y equals negative 1. But y equals negative 1 is parallel to the x-axis. So my functions in terms of x, and we're rotating this time around something parallel to the x-axis, what method am I going to use? Disk washer. So once again, is the disk washer formula? Disk washer is volume equals pi times integral from a to b, a big functional radius squared minus a little functional radius squared dx. That's my functions in terms of x. But to get big radius, you got to go from the axis of rotation to the outside edge that defines the region, that, that equation that defines the out. And what I mean by outside, it's relative distance. So here is y equals uh, negative 1. So the farthest equation away is this negative, this is the guy on top, negative x squared plus 2x. So to get a distance, it's top minus bottom or right minus left. So this would be negative x squared plus 2x minus bottom negative 1. And cleaning that up, that gives you negative x squared plus 2x plus 1. That'll be your big radius. Your little radius is from the axis of rotation to the inside edge. 
and that is the inside edge is x, top minus bottom, and it'll be x minus negative 1, which makes it x plus 1. Does that make sense? So volume would be equal to pi times integral of your big function radius, negative x squared plus 2x plus 1 squared, minus your little radius, x plus 1 squared, dx, from a to b. And a would be 0, and b would be 1. Does that make sense? The goal of this is just like the calculator project. Because we give you on the calculator project, we give you one region, we'll make you beat it up. After a while, the goal is to catch a pattern. And we're trying to catch patterns on this thing. Now, again, a much more harder problem, but you could still integrate by hand by pulling this mess out and pulling that mess out and then integrating it. I'm going to call this thing back down again. But the only difference between the last problem and this problem is I inside those parentheses now. I've got a plus 1 there, and with this x, I've got to insert a plus 1. So let's just double-check what I just typed in on my equation here. This is the integral from 0 to 1 of negative x squared plus 2x plus 1 squared minus x plus 1 squared. dx, the only thing missing is the pi. So there's my answer, 0.5333333. I'll convert that to a nice little fraction there just to make it nice. So the answer for volume is going to be 8 fifteenths pi units cubed. And there's your volume for this guy. And what did you just find the volume of? Well, this time you took this region, rotated around the line y equals negative 1. So you get this reverse image going down over here and upside down. And you got this thing with a hole in it. This is what you found the bottom of. Does that make sense? This widget. But keep, keep beating a death a dead horse here. Yeah. Well, first thing I do is on my calculator, I do second entry and second entry is a callback button, yeah. and then I scroll over, and then I hit second, I and S for insert, okay. or DEL for delete. That's all I'm doing. All right. All right. But now, same region, beating it up. Now look at this one. Then we're going to take the same region, now we're going to rotate around the line Y equals 2. So again, here's my region. Y equals negative X squared plus 2X. Y equals X from 0 to 1. I haven't, I haven't changed anything but except this. The axis of rotation here is Y equals 2. Now, the difference between this last problem and this problem is the axis now is above the region. In the last problem, the axis was below the region. But Y equals 2 is still parallel to the X axis. My function is in terms of X. And we're rotating around something parallel to the x-axis. What method? Just watch. Volume is equal to pi times integral from a to b, a big functional radius squared minus a little functional radius squared to dx. To calculate my big radius, this would be, remember, the big radius is the distance from the axis of rotation to the outside edge of the region. Now, in this example, the axis is above the region. So the farthest function away is actually below the region. So it's top minus bottom. This would be 2 minus x. That would be what my big radius is. Does that make sense? What would my little radius be? It's from the axis rotation to the inside or the closest edge to the axis. The top is 2 minus, notice the wonderful use of parentheses, parentheses, the, bottom, the, the equation that's closest is the negative x squared plus 2x. Of course, I'm going to clean that up. That'll give me 2 plus x squared minus, distributing the negative there, minus 2x, cleaning it up. Does that make sense? Location is very important. So now, plugging it into my formula, volume is equal to pi times integral from 0 to 1, of your big radius, which is 2 minus x, and you got to square it, minus the little radius, which is your 2 plus x squared minus 2x squared dx. 
Now I'm going to put this guy on the calculator. Okay, so this one I'm going to, it's kind of completely different, so I'm going to start all over again. I'm going to leave the pi off in the answer. Math number nine. Integral from 0 to 1 of parentheses 2 minus x, close parentheses squared, minus parentheses 2 plus x squared, minus 2x, close parentheses squared, dx. How I, one way you can tell you did not screw this problem up is this. When I hit enter on the calculator, I'm going to get a crappy number. But what kind of number should I get? This is volume. I should get positive. If I get a negative number, I screwed up the top and bottom. I got something backwards. There's a clue for you. You can't get a negative volume. So putting a pi back on my answer, I end up getting this volume is equal to 7 fifteenths pi units cubed. Does that make sense? Now, what I'm also trying to do up here is show you guys exactly what I'm going to want in terms of the volume rotation problems on your calculator project, which I'm about to upload a new one for you guys very soon. What did I put on this particular problem? I put what method I used and a general formula. I calculated the big radius and the little radius. I wrote up the formula, but it's a calculator project. So for the entire problem in terms of integration, I want you to use your calculator to integrate and actually give me a, an answer traditionally in terms of pi. Leave the pi in the answer. But now, take a look at this guy. Take the same region, but this time they want me to rotate around the y-axis. My function is in terms of x. It is the line y equals uh, negative x squared plus 2x and y equals x from 0 to 1. But this time they want me to rotate around the y-axis. The y-axis is my axis of rotation. So let's understand this. My function is in terms of x, but I want to rotate around the y-axis. What method am I going to use? This is a shell problem. The formula for a shell problem is volume is equal to 2 pi times integral from a to b of what I call the point radius, which uses an arbitrary point, times f of x, top part of your region, minus g of x, the bottom part of your region, dx. So volume is going to be equal to 2 pi times integral. We'll put the point radius there in just a second. Look at your region. What defines the top part is this negative x squared plus 2x minus what defines the bottom part of my region, the function x, dx. Now a point radius is, this is dx, so I'm going to pick an arbitrary x point inside my region and calculate the distance between that point and the axis of rotation. So my point radius... We're going left or right with this shell method problem in terms of x. It's right minus left. What's on the right is x minus what's on the left is the y-axis, and the y-axis is the axis x equals 0. x minus 0, which makes it x. My point radius when I'm rotating a region that's in the first quadrant about, about the y-axis is always x. What are my bounds? The bounds are based upon the region itself. What are my bounds? Zero to one. Now, putting this on my calculator, and again, this is exactly what I want to see in terms of calculator project. I don't want you guys to spend more than an hour on this calculator project because this thing should be quick and easy. So, write down the formula, what method you're using, write down the formula. I want you to plug the numbers into the formula and your bounds and stuff, and then I want you to use the calculator integrate. Now, on this particular problem, I traditionally leave my answer in terms of pi, but the shell method has this 2 out pi out in front of it. So I'm going to get 2 and then go math number 9. So that represents the 2 and just stick the pi on there. From 0 to 1 of my point radius, which is parentheses x, close parentheses, times an open parentheses, times another parentheses, top negative x squared plus 2x, close parentheses, minus bottom x, close parentheses, close parentheses for that part, and then um, the dx. So just make sure your parentheses all match up on this one. And there's one set of parentheses for the entire integrate the whole thing. So when I put enter, I get 
0.166666, which converts into 1.6 and sticking a pi on there, pi 6 units cubed. Use your calculator to integrate. Now, take the same region. I want you to rotate around the line x equals 2. Here's your line right here. Region y equals negative x squared plus 2x. And here's the line y equals x from 0 to 1. Two points of intersection. But x equals 2 is a vertical line that is parallel to the y-axis. So here's my region, and we're going to be rotating it around a line that is parallel to the y-axis. What method am I going to use? Function terms of x, rotate around something parallel to y-axis, shell method. So the shell method formula is volume equals 2 pi times integral from a to b of the point radius times f of x top minus g of x bottom dx. So volume is equal to 2 pi times integral. Leave a little space for the point radius. We'll come back and get that one. Your top of your function is negative x squared plus 2x. Minus the bottom region is x dx. What's my point radius? Well, it's an arbitrary point, and because this is dx, I want an x point, and the distance between that x point and the axis of rotation. So your point radius would be what? Outstanding, right minus left. But this time the axis is on the right, so it's 2 minus the point is on the left, x. So your point radius is 2 minus x from 0 to 1. So once you've got this thing going, I'm going to recall back down my function again. And the difference between that last problem and this problem, if you look at it, instead of x, I got 2 minus x. So I'm going to go in there and just insert second INS the 2 minus x thing there and hit enter and I get a half and remember I already got the 2 out front so the answer is going to be sticking a pi on there that's a half pi units cubed and notice in all these problems I actually didn't draw the picture of what I'm finding the volume of you can go back and do that if you want to but I didn't require that does that make sense And one more, just in case I threw one like this on you. If I happen to put the axis x equals negative 2, what would my point radius be? If it was x equals negative 2 on this side, it would be x minus negative 2, which makes it x plus 2. Right minus left on this. Here are some of your non-rotation -ro volume problems in terms of... Uh, shell disk problems here. And these are the ones that tend to throw people fits because you got to outthink the problem. And so because it's thrown people before you that have taken this class fits, I stuck them on the notes. Remember, sometimes right minus left is better than top minus bottom. I know you've been programmed by me, top minus bottom, DX. Yep, right minus left, DY. But sometimes right minus left can be more advantageous. Always keep in the back of your mind Right minus left. Because sometimes you don't have a distinct top bottom to your region, but you do have a distinct right left. Then you should go dy on this thing. Look at this one. Find the volume of the frustrum. Remember the notes right at the beginning. I told you guys what a frustrum was. It's the thing that the elephant stands on at the circus. It's a cone with the top cut out of it. All right, there you go. Okay. Find the volume of a frustrum of a right cone where the height is 14, the lower base is uh, 15, and the top radius is 12. So what you got here on a frustrum is this. All right. We've got the circle right here with the radius of this guy. This is the base. is going to be R equals 15. The thing happens to be how tall is this guy? 14. And I've got a top radius. And this guy happens to be what? 12. And if you connect it. This is what you got. You want to find the volume of this guy. Now, we know what you people do because you've got a Weber problem just like this. Everyone's got one. Okay? What the problem is, what students do, is they go online on Google. They look up the word frustum, formula for volume, 
and they figure out you need a base radius, a top radius, you need a height. You stick these numbers into this awesome formula off of Google, and they actually plug in the answers, and you get your number, and you stick it into WebWork, and mathematically WebWork counts it right, and you actually think you've done something, and you go on to the next problem. Well, actually what you've done is lost brain cells. But you actually didn't use any math, you used Google. So, here's the deal. What's going on here? Look at the region. So let me understand. We're talking about volume rotation. This is the region that to create this guy here, you're rotating it about the y-axis. Does that make sense? Look at this region. So I got points here. Here's zero. This is 15. The height is 14 up here. And this point right here is at 12. And what we want to do is we want to rotate this region around the y-axis. But look at it. i got to create these equations. Now, if you look at it from a top-bottom perspective, you've got a problem. Look at this region right here. You've got a top being horizontal here, and then it slants over right here. You've got two different equations to make up the top to the y equals zero equation that makes up the bottom. Does that make sense? That's bad when i got too many equations. I want to have one equation for top and one equation for bottom. I don't have that. But then, just for a second, don't look at it from a top-bottom perspective. Look at it from a right-left perspective. On the right, I've got a line. On the left, i got the, the y-axis, which is x equals 0. So I actually have a distinct right-left. I don't have a distinct top-bottom, but I have a distinct right-left. And so this is a line. Do you know how to figure out the equation of a line? Because that's what you've got to do in this problem. There's two points. There's this point here that goes to the point 12 comma 14, and there's this point right here which goes to the point 15 comma 0. To find a line, you've got to have a slope. Your slope is changing y over the change in x. That'll be 14 minus 0 over 12 minus 15. 14 minus 0 is 14 over 12 minus 15 is what? Negative 3. So I get a slope of negative 14 thirds. Yeah, WebR hates me on this one. 14 thirds, there it is. Negative 14 thirds is my slope. So I'm going to use a point slope formula. Point slope. Y minus Y1 equals M times X minus X1. Pick a point. I like that point right there. So Y minus 0 is equal to slope, which is negative 14 thirds times X minus 15. I'm going to solve for Y. Y is equal to negative 14 thirds X plus... And negative 14 times a negative 15 is a 220 divided by 3, because it's 14 thirds, is 70 plus 70. All I did was distribute here, your 14 thirds. But here's the deal. This function, I want rights and lefts. So if I can write this function in terms of y, so solving for y, so excuse me, solving for x in terms of y, I'm going to subtract 70. I get y minus 70 is equal to negative 14 thirds x. And then I'm going to multiply by negative 3 fourteenths on both sides. So I get negative 3 fourteenths times y minus 70 equals x. So there's my equation for the line on the right side. Right minus left. So you understand, I'm ro volume rotation. What method am I going to use? My function is in terms of y and we're rotating around the y-axis. you got to outthink this one. Y to y. It's the same variable. What method? Disk washer. When it's the same variable, disk washer. But this time, volume would be equal to pi times integral of big function raised squared minus little function raised squared dy from c to d. This is a dy problem. So your big function radius is going to be from the axis of rotation to the outside edge. So your big radius is going to be this negative 3 14 times y minus 70 minus the x, the y axis is 0. And your little radius is going to be, this thing's going to be solid when you rotate it, so it's going to be 0 because you're actually on the axis. So you end up getting volume is equal to pi times integral of negative 14 thirds times y minus 70, close parentheses, close parentheses squared, dy from, what are my bounds? This is dy, i got to have y numbers. What are my y bounds of my region? What's on the bottom? Zero. What's on the top? The height. 
14. 0 to 14. So to get the volume, leaving off the uh, pi, math integral, math number 9 there, integral from 0 to 14 of, notice how I use this, another parenthesis around the whole thing, okay? I've got uh, negative 3 divided by 14 times parentheses, instead of y's, I use x, x minus 70, close parentheses, close parentheses again for the whole thing, squared the x. And when I chunk this thing in my calculator, what should I get? I got a positive number. And I got to put pi back on there. And the answer to this problem it really is 2,562 pi units cubed. And if you go look it up on Google and plug their little formula in, you'll get the same answer. There you go. Study hard on this stuff. I've got a few more web work problems to do on section 7.3, uh, 7.2, 7.3, and then we'll move on to next time on Wednesday, arc length 7.4. So get prepared ahead. See you guys in.